Saint Jacobus is an American artist who was the main illustrator of the Goosebumps books. He is best known for his work on the original series, where he painted 60 of the 62 original covers. Let's see how he created the most remembered creepy covers of the 90s. Tim was born on April 21, 1959, in New Jersey. Like many children and future artists, he liked to draw. When he was in high school, he became interested in the illustration of the cover of music records, especially those made by Roger Dean. He was encouraged by one of his teachers to draw as he saw a future in his skills. He studied graphic design and fine art at the Spectrum Institute for the Advertising Arts. In the 80s and the early 90s, there was a horror and science fiction book printing boom. Taking advantage of that trend, Tim did his first job for the Dawn Publishing House, illustrating the cover of Fugitive in Transit and Brains Incorporated. In the early 90s, Scholastic was looking for illustrators for a new series of books written by R. Al Stein. They had two artists in mind to do the Goosebumps covers, Tim Jacobus and Gene Thyssen. Tim created the art for the first Goosebumps book, Welcome to Dead House, and Jim created the cover art for Stay Out of the Basement. Scholastic chose Tim because they liked his use of saturated colors. They believed that the colors would be striking for young readers. Before designing the covers, Tim would be giving a short story synopsis and have discussion with art directors at Scholastic to give an idea of what should be on the cover. The illustrator would apply various color combinations to each cover and try it not to repeat any combination from previous covers. In this way he made the 60 covers, which gave way to numerous anecdotes and inconveniences. He would have a month deadline to complete a cover. This caused complication at one point, specifically with a night in Terror Tower. He had 24 hours to turn in the painting, but it wasn't finished yet, so he worked on it in the morning and finished it late at night. The next day, he turned it in to a scholastic on time. For the cover of Revenge of the Long Gnomes, Tim originally had the gnome on the left picking its nose. Despite the art directors at Scholastic finding it to be funny, they also found it gross, so they asked him to repaint it. The final cover has the left gnome scratching his head instead. After Tim turned in the artwork for Let's Get Invisible, Scholastic art directors want to send it back to him, telling him to make it scarier by adding in cobwebs and spiders. However, things were going a little behind schedule, so an unknown artist from Scholastic adding the additional elements themselves. Tim has gone on record saying, that's the one thing that bugged me about that piece is that somebody drew on my painting. The illustration for Goosebumps took him about 30 to 40 hours of work. To make them, Tim had a routine, starting work at 5 in the morning with music in the background, usually progressive rock, especially the group Yes. Tim Jacobus spent nearly a decade illustrating R. L. Stein's books. In the late 90s, he was finishing cover number 26 for the 2000 Goosebumps series, The Incredible Shrieking Fifth Grader, 
when a representative from Scholastic contacted him and informed him that he, it was not necessary to finish that piece. Making that unfinished illustration the last thing he did for the series of books. Goosebumps would end with the arrival of the year 2000. But his work isn't just limited to Goosebumps books. He has done hundreds of book covers and paintings for different series, novels, and video games. After a time away from the franchise, Tim was brought back for the Goosebumps films. He did the artwork for the Invisible Boy's Revenge, book cover that was shown near the end of the movie. Tim has written an autobiographical book called It Came From New Jersey, My Life As An Artist, a book on his life and career for Goosebumps. In 2021, a book that celebrates Tim Jacobus' art from R. L. Stein books were published. Tim continues to create under the roof of his own studio, offers creative solution to every type of graphic needs. The Jacobus Studios, along with traditional illustration skills, has full digital capabilities. Ting has one son, and the two currently live in New Jersey, the same place where he materialized with his paintings, the nightmare of a whole generation of children. <laughs>